Who's part of your protest today? Yes, we do. No, you don't. I'm yes, standing we here. Do. We, please move away from the protest, please. How, how far away would you like me to go? As far as you can, please, because this is going to cause a problem for us. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. This leaving. is going to cause a problem. Please, please move away. From the I'm standing here and I'm listening to your protest. You can't have a private protest in the middle of the park. I'm standing here supporting you. I'm on your side. No, you're don't not. tell me to move away. No, you're not. Please move away. I'm not. Then you need a police officer to remove me. If that's what you need, then you need to put a law enforcement official. your ground. You have absolutely the right to be where you are and protest however you want. If they have a permit, they have a permit for a specific amount of space. Of course. And if I'm in that space, that's fine. But they don't have a permit here. I know they don't. Of course they don't. So, you know. No, you can't be where they, they, you want. They want to come suddenly into the public and have the public change. You know, it's, it's one thing to change a system. It's, you can't change, like, where the people go. That's absolutely right. No, of course it's ridiculous. I mean, whether you, you agree or disagree with what you're trying to say, like, I personally not exactly you know, agree with you, but hey. Okay. I mean, what the exactly. they made a big deal. I know, I know. Beatriz, I wanted to add something to what you said a few minutes ago. First, she's a worker. You don't want Trump's head, though. You want accountability. I think if you add up all his crimes and you put them together, this is what you wind up with. The guillotine. <laughs> Okay. Well, like I said, you have the rights. I mean, that's what, that's why America is the greatest country on earth. You can express your opinion however you want to or however you want to. So I came from USSR originally. So I, I absolutely appreciate the fact that, uh, hey, we can agree to disagree. So but, but why do you think they want you out of here?
not just a question of them choosing the wrong candidate. The law and order that they're seeking to protect is the law and order of the capitalist class. That's like, well, both the Democrats and the Republicans. Yeah. Like, it's so, so Biden might seem less inflammatory, you know, less grotesque uh, in his approach than Trump. And it's true, Trump says a lot of things that uh, Biden doesn't say. But make no mistake, Biden is a very strong candidate. He's 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 a very
opportunities left for us except this as a fact. Well, guess what? It's a goddamn lie. The working class can overthrow this system. We can live in a society that is organized around fulfilling human needs rather than amassing endless profits, brutalizing the oppressed. We can live in a society that uproots racism, the oppression of women, of gay and transgender people, and all the oppressed. But the only way to do that is with a revolution. And the key to that revolution is the political independence of the working class. Thank you. Hell yeah! Help fans and fascists out of Kenosha now! Help fans and fascists! I wasn't listening. I, I oh, okay. <laughs> so I just don't it's speak Spanish. Even over the translation, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see. I got it. So is this like a socialist revolution thing? Yeah. Oh, I see. At the courts and jails, the cops, the mayors, they're all part of the capitalist system and they don't work to service us for our Oh, it's a Cuban thing? I think. Oh, So okay. mayors, cops, courts and jails, so, go to So this group is not for Democrats, Republicans, it's basically for socialism, if I, if I understand correctly, yeah, socialism. For oh, okay, got it. So you want to get rid of capitalism, right? Okay. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. Oh my God, I've never heard any of these before. I'm sorry? So I'm going to sit youth down my knee. Oh, I'm sorry. Versus our youth newspaper, Revolution, to read what real revolutionary Marxists, real socialists, have to say about black liberation. Yes? Yeah! All right. Up next, we have Shandar, followed by Melissa. Thank you. Well, I wanted to thank people for coming out today. And I wanted to say a few things. Um, Lucio talked about the importance of history. And I certainly agree with that. It's one of the reasons why I teach history at the City University of New York. At the City University of New York, one fifth of all adjuncts, people know what adjuncts are? That's those of us who teach the same courses but get paid about a quarter or a third. And we're hired by the semester or sometimes if we're real lucky by the year or maybe 
handful of years. But anyway, one fifth of the adjuncts have been laid off, and a whole lot of adjuncts at Hunter College where I teach are supposed to be paid weeks and, and maybe even months late. And supposedly there's not enough money here in the capital of finance capital in the whole world. Okay? But history, I think, is very important. And so, with your permission, I want to say a few things largely to some of the younger people here. First of all, this is a protest about what people correctly are calling endemic racism. In other words, racism which comes out of the structural racial oppression that has been fundamental to this country since its beginning. And over and over and over again, over and over again, you see the new example of what happened in that famous Supreme Court decision of Dred Scott, who was an escaped slave, who took his master to court, and it went all the way up to the Supreme Court of the United States, that august body that we're taught to worship and think is some sort of divinely inspired institution of democracy. And the Supreme Court, what did they say? They issued a ruling in the Dred Scott decision, this was 1850, and they said, Chief Justice Taney said, the black man has no right. The white man is required to respect. Now, Jacob Blake, as Yari said, Jacob Blake was shot in the back seven times. But unlike so many others, he did not die. He managed to escape death, although he is now paralyzed. And like an escaped slave, they shackled him. They did not just shackle him by the wrists. It turns out they shackled him by the ankles as well, even though he is paralyzed from the legs down. So this cannot help but remind us, if we look at history, of those horrendous graphics that we see about some of the reality of slavery, that the rulers of this country, of both parties, wanted to erase and have forgotten, which is how escaped slaves were tortured, frequently with special shackles that would cut into their flesh to set an example that others should not escape, okay? And again and again it keeps happening, not simply or even mainly because of particular attitudes in the heads of particular individuals, but because the social system requires racial oppression to function as it has since its beginning. And so when we talk about structural racism and racial oppression, we want people to think about it deeply because we really are determined to pull it up by the roots and we have to understand those roots. Secondly, secondly, why does this group keep talking about the Democratic Party so much? Pretty much every speaker keeps talking about the Democratic Party. Why is that? Don't they, don't they understand how horrible Trump is? Well, yes, we understand how horrible Donald Trump is. And every day he gives us two examples. But how the hell did he get into the presidency? What kind of society put that type of person into the presidency? After what? After years, years of alternation between the two parties that have run this country for a century and a half or more. And now they want us to pretend or believe or talk us into the idea, well, just this one more time, yeah. and then it's going to be okay. No, it's not. So why do we talk? Very few people in New York City, let alone people who come to a protest like this, let alone people that want to protest against racist oppression, have illusions in the Republican Party. But a lot have illusions in the Democratic Party. A lot. The labor movement in this country overwhelmingly is chained to the Democratic Party. Okay? Civil rights organizations are mainly subordinated politically to the Democratic Party, okay? Civil liberties organizations, immigrant rights organizations, and the most of the left subordinated or willfully subordinates itself to the Democratic Party. So when we talk about unchaining, sorry, the power that can effectively fight against racist oppression, we're talking about, first, first of all, fighting to break the chains of political subordination it means that when a racist outrage, outrage, like the willful maiming of Jacob Blake, 
Kenosha occurs that the Democratic loyal organizations do virtually nothing to protest. Next, next, this is a different type of rally. Most rallies that you go to these days, first you have to stand around and be guilt tripped, right? You have to stand around and be guilt tripped, okay? All right? You go through some ritual guilt trip nonsense theatricality. And even in some cases, agree to segregation of the rallies. We have an article, No Segregation, an Anti-Racist Protest. Sometimes you go to a protest and they say, well, this kind of people stand over there, and that kind of people stand over there. Sometimes they've even done that with undocumented immigrants and people with papers. They have the chutzpah for the idiocy to willfully display to the repressed, repressive forces who does and doesn't have what kind of goddamn little piece of paper that they don't take seriously. State repression, well, we do. Next point. So, learning from history. So, I want to say a few personal things, somewhat personal with your permission. First, I confess. One of the very first things I ever did politically as a little kid was to listen to one of the left groups that some of my family was in, which was the Communist Party. And this said, we've got to stop Barry Goldwater. This was in 1964. There was a crazy Republican Greek, I don't even know how to call him, called Barry Goldwater. And one of the things he said, he was going to rain bombs on Vietnam, which few people had heard of. Okay. And he was going to do a lot of other horrible things. The people were scared, and it was scary. Scary. So the Communist Party, which claimed to be communist and Marxist, said, go out and stop them, by which they meant, wink, wink, vote for a man called Lyndon Baines Johnson. Because he's going to prevent this bad stuff from happening. So I made a little handwritten sign. I confess I did. I think I was nine years old. And I put it on a street quote. And it said, like, stop gold water fashion. Well, Dem the Democrat Lyndon Baines Johnson was elected and he staged a fabricated incident in the Gulf of, where he called this thing the Gulf of Tonkin incident that he fabricated to then massively escalate the war in Vietnam, which resulted in the genocidal murder of approximately 3 million Vietnamese people, blanketing the country with her herbicides, defoliants, and poisons like Agent Orange. Okay? This was the Democratic Party. Now, this is the same Democratic Party. They want to claim that they, huh, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Well, he is the hero and the model of a fellow you might have heard of, Bernie. And a young woman that I'm sure you've heard of, AOC. They can't get enough of that FDR as the icon and the symbol that they want us to reverentially bow down to. And they named their programs after him. So this New Deal, or that New Deal. Are you serious? This is the man who, who, in his New Deal ramping up towards the Second Imperialist World War, imprisoned the Japanese Americans in concentration camps in this, in this country. That's right. That's right. Okay. This is the fellow whose successor, ethnic successor, Harry Truman is the only head of state in history to drop atomic bombs on people. Not once, but twice in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. That was a racist war crime, unimaginable to the human race up until that point, and the human race has seen a lot of war crimes. That was courtesy of the Democratic Party, which then, together with the Republicans, brought the Korean War, in which millions of Korean people were murdered, and then the Vietnam War, and then JFK threatening to blow up the world to try to stop the Cuban Revolution. Alright? But what about the story that somehow the Democratic Party fought against fascism? Well, looking at Kenosha, it sure as hell is scary. That's the truth. That's the truth. You see fascistic militiamen walk into town and just gun people down after trading pleasantries with the cops. So yes, it's scary, but as Ali pointed out, you cannot fight 
the threat of fascistic violence by relying on the biggest perpetrators of racist violence, which is the armed forces and police, the state. And don't forget that Biden has now been endorsed by dozens of spy of spy the FBI is your friends, uh -uh. think the NSA is your friends, the CIA, tell that to anybody anywhere around the world. All right. Now, I have, a, some, I have some idea of what fascism actually means. My mother was in one of Hitler's concentration camps. 27 members of my family that we know in, that we know of, and I'm sure a lot more that we don't, died in Auschwitz. But what did FDR's government do at the time? when people demanded that Jewish refugees be allowed into this country. Was it much different from what Donald Trump is doing with refugees fleeing Central America? Well, we know the answer to that, no. They said, no, we're not going to allow them in. If you look up the history of that, you'll read about a, you'll read about a ship called the St. Louis, which had 900 Jewish refugees fleeing from Hitler's terror. But the FDR government did not open the doors to them. They sent them back, many of them, to their death. Nor would he even agree to bomb the railway tracks on the road to the crematoria in places like Auschwitz. And they want to sell us the lie that this is a party that fights against racism. When under their administration in this city, in this city, we saw Bill de Blasio, one of the most progressive Democrats around, they told us, right? Praise the cops. Even after they rammed their, their patrol cars into demonstrators on the streets. And we see in, in the cities where the, the names of the people who haunt our dreams because their lives were cut short every goddamn day in this racist society. They're almost all governed by Democratic mayors. So it's going to be difficult in this next period. It's not a game. The fight against racist oppression is, is hella serious. It's damn serious. That's why we need those reds who don't lie, who don't sugarcoat it, who tell the truth no matter how bitter, who don't pander, who don't tail along with what's popular, because we're determined to uproot racism in this country and to defeat the threat of fascism and, and imperialist war and the real war is going on almost every day. The only way to do that is if the working class takes power. Thank you. My grandmother is also a Sha Auschwitz survivor. Uh -huh. uh, my only question is, I, I listened to your speech. Is uh, as far as far as I understand correctly, you're against the Republicans and the Democrats. I'm sorry, what's your name? And uh, what Vladimir. Are you from? Uh, Vladimir. I think I've met you before, Vladimir. That's okay. Thank you. You do. Okay.
Um, so once again, capitalism finds itself in a crisis 